match the scales to the chords of the tune. You want your melodies to be smooth and flowing over the chords. You want to know how to expand your vocabulary by improvising with the right scales in the tunes you are playing. Not only do you want to know the scales, but you also want your improvised melodies to fit exactly onto the chords and sound super great. And in this process you're probably encountering a lot of pitfalls that can cause a lot of worries. Like, are you actually doing it the right way? Maybe you're scared of playing a void note. Maybe your solos sound like exercises. And are your improvised lines actually good enough for jazz at all? We'll get started right away so you can add the scales to the chords and play the most beautiful improvised solos ever. Scales are amazing for playing beautiful melodic lines. And the reason for this is the scale can connect, emphasize and lead towards your target notes and your chord notes. So we need to dig into the material, really get to know it well. First step is know the key of the song you're playing. Finding the key to the tune means also knowing almost all the scales we need to improvise on the tune. I love this tune, take the A train, let's dig into this one. The key of the tune can be found in the chord where the melody ends. The tune of take the A train is in D major. And I line up the chord scales like this. Because we need to know the chords of the scales very well. The chords are the backbone of the tune and form the foundation on which the melody is played. Looking at the tune, looking at the chords of the D major scale, we see that they are almost all there. There's one that isn't, that's the E7 sharp 11. Let's dig into this one first. This doesn't come logical, so I'll give you this one. If we look at the B melodic minor scale, we'll see on the fourth degree, it has a huge E7 sharp 11 chord. And if we turn this scale around and play it from the E, you get an E Lydian dominant scale. This was a little sidestep, so if you want more on Lydian dominance and alter scales, please let me know in the comments below, then I can act on it. Thank you. The most important thing to understand when we are playing scales over the chords are the chord scale relationship. The D major 7 chord is of course found in the D major scale on the first step. When you play the chord tones, the function also becomes clear. When you play this scale from the root, from the D, you emphasize the chord notes, the D, the F sharp, the A, the C sharp, on the strong beats of the bar. And when we play the scale like this, the function is also clear, although we are playing all these extra notes. When we change the emphasis, starting on the E on the D minor scale, we get different tones we emphasize on the strong beat. Here we get the E, the G, the B and the D. And we emphasize the E minor chord. Getting a Dorian scale. That E minor chord is of course also found in Take the A Train. When we keep cross-referencing the chords of the tune with chords in the scale, we find all the connections. And we actually know what scale fits where. With of course this one exception I gave you, the E7 sharp 11. But else we play that major scale all the way through the tune. You will need to practice your scale thoroughly to get through this. And in the lesson manual I've added a few scale exercises, but I really recommend you to get the Take the A Train solo manual on Patreon. This is where I've added all the chords, all the scales, all the exercises and this goes totally in depth into how to practice and how to play and how to improvise overtake the A-Train. I'd love for you to have a chance to dig further into this. I'll post a few preview pages on Take the A-Train solo manual in my groups and on the page of Facebook but of course you can also find the link in the description. <laughs> Next to knowing the chord scale relationships, we need to play beautiful solos. And to play beautiful solos, we really need to know how to play beautiful melodies. And melody playing is something you need to develop. And luckily, there's a super simple but really nice way to do this. In the line I just played, I focus on connecting the chord notes with the scale. Looking at the D major chord and next to it the D major scale. You can see in between all the chord notes, there's a scale note. When I play this, I think the chord notes, but I play the scale. The basic rule is start the line on a chord note and end on a chord note, just adding the scale in between. You see in this 
this lick I add small groups of scales. Two things are happening. I connect the chord notes by adding scale notes in between the chord notes. And when I start a line, I aim for the next target note. That's a chord note I want to hit. And this is where this method of connecting chord notes becomes really handy. You see that I emphasize the chord notes in the bar, making sure that the function of the chord is clearly expressed. I do not strictly add all the chord notes on the heavy beats of the bar, but you see most of the chord notes are on the beats of the bar. And there's a lot of chord notes. One thing you have to be aware of, you see that I start this line on the D. When I go down the scale, I hit the D, hit the B, G, the E. Actually, this becomes an E minor 7 chord, although I'm starting on the D. This actually sounds like I'm playing that E minor Dorian scale, playing an E minor 7 chord instead of that D I intended. This way, you really need to hear that chord scale relationship. Train this, know what you are playing, know what chord notes you are hitting with the scale. Get that sound into your core by playing very slow. Add a lot of rhythm. A lot of rhythm can really make your lines interesting, also when you're playing the scales, because you really don't want to sound like a scale exercise. Just playing up and down those scales. When I play with rhythm, I use these small groupings and make pauses in between. This just makes the line much more interesting to listen to, and you get a great overview of what you are playing, only playing in small groups. Also when I'm using these small groups, you see that I still use that connecting the chord notes with the scale. I stay between the chord notes, just adding the scale notes needed. I hit the chord notes as target notes, and in this way I'm emphasizing the chords function. Stepping up, adding more material, here I add the arpeggio. I'm adding a B minor arpeggio on that E7 sharp 11 chord. The magic of arpeggios is that you emphasize all the notes you're playing in the arpeggio. All the tones of the arpeggio are target notes. In this example I play the arpeggios a little bit more extensively so you can see how to use them. I'm adding an F sharp minor arpeggio as an upper structure of that D major 7. And at the end, I'm adding a B minor 7 arpeggio. The arpeggio adds a lot of power into the lines because they're only containing great target notes. And the arpeggio makes sure they are really emphasized. To dig further, making your own lines using these scales. Add great rhythm and sweet arpeggios. Get a head start by downloading the lesson manual on Patreon, containing all licks and exercises. And you probably want to continue your jazz journey and getting more scales under your fingers. Check out this epic video with Barry Harris and Charlie Park on the most important scale in jazz. Play music, have fun.